Even with 2,000 union workers striking in Spokane, Kaiser Aluminum managers say everything is running smoothly inside their plants. And now the company's president said they're adding more replacement workers every day. Kremtu's Heather Cataldo is live at the Trentwood plant now with the latest on this. Heather. Charles, we spoke to Kaiser's president today, and he told us this Trentwood plant will be 100% operational by the end of this month, even though most of the plant's workforce is here on the picket lines. The strikers stand their ground while the trucks keep Kaiser's products moving out of the plant and to their customers. During the 1995 strike, replacement workers kept the plants going at just 30% of their normal productivity. This time, Kaiser managers say they started with 1,000 temporary workers. Managers say they added 30 more workers on Monday and 35 more Tuesday. And it won't stop there. The Trentwood workers are pulling 12 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Kaiser's managers say within two weeks, they'll have enough temporary workers to get the plant back to its 24-hour-a-day operations. Kaiser's president toured the plants on Monday and says the temporary workers are doing fine. I'm extremely impressed with what these people have pulled off. They did better than I thought they could do. And at this point, I'd say we're about seven to nine days ahead of, ahead of the schedule. Now, coming up tonight on Crem 2 News More at 6, we'll, you'll find out what life is like inside the plant. You'll hear from a man who's been inside Trentwood nearly a week. Reporting live in the Spokane Valley, I'm Heather Catalo, Crem 2 News. The mayor of... Kaiser strike enters week two. We hear from a worker on the inside. Well, it has been nearly a week now since the United Steel workers walked off the job. And ever since then, temporary workers have virtually been locked inside Kaiser Aluminum's Spokane plants. Krem 2's Heather Catalo spoke to a Kaiser employee who is inside the Trentwood plant. She joins us now live with more on that. Heather? Nadine, for the first time today, we were able to speak to an employee who's been inside the Trentwood plant for nearly seven days straight. While his co-workers pick it out here, he's inside keeping the company going. The steel workers walking the picket lines do not have jobs right now. For the supervisors and replacement workers inside the Kaiser Trentwood plant, it's a different story. They're working 12 and 16 hour days. It's, it's long hours, but I mean, this, this to me is a little bit more than my job. I mean, this is, this is my career. John Bernoli says he's working with only one third of the people he usually works with in one of Kaiser's labs, but they are keeping productivity high. And Bertnoli says everyone pitches in, even for the labor-intensive jobs they don't usually do. It's not a real picnic, but uh, I didn't hire on here expect to be serving ice cream either. Kaiser officials say the Trentwood plant will be 100% operational by the end of the month. They also say Monday marks the first day of stable production at Mead, now shipping out 100 million pounds of metal a day. We're shipping regularly to customers. We're, we're booking orders for future shipment. But union officials say they left the Trentwood plant with such a large stockpile, it makes it easier for the company. We don't see anything coming out of the mills, so we don't believe that they are 100%. As the strike drags on, supervisors stuck inside the plant say they're happy to keep their company going. But it does take its toll. I miss my family a lot. Um, my little girl keeps asking me when I'm going to come home, and I just keep telling her as soon as I can. We have some new information tonight. Kaiser's president did tell us that they have contacted a federal mediator to see if they can get the union back to the negotiating table. Reporting live in the Spokane Valley, I'm Heather Catalo, Crem 2 News. Well, since the strike started, Kaiser has employed 1,000 temporary workers. Its workforce is made up of salaried supervisors, retirees, and replacement workers. Today, Kaiser brought in 35 more temporary workers. It added 30 on Monday. And Kaiser officials say they will continue to bring more people to keep those plants running. Next on Creme 2 News, latest at 11. We, we have requested the assistance of a federal mediator to assist in the negotiating process. Kaiser Aluminum makes a move to end the strike. Onlookers are back. As the Kaiser strike hits the one-week mark, the company is now asking for federal help to get back to the bargaining table. Those talks stopped uh, when the strike began, but now they just might be restarted with a federal mediator. Kremtu's Rex Roland is on the picket line at Trentwood to tell us what strikers think about this new development. Rex? 
Charles, while some Kaiser employees are cautiously hopeful, others are suspicious about why the company wants to bring in a federal negotiator. They're also questioning the company's sincerity about wanting to end the strike. As Kaiser employees burn the midnight oil on the picket line, company officials spent the day talking about how the plants are surviving with temporary workers. But the company's president also announced he wants to bring in a federal negotiator to resolve the labor dispute. We think that we need to do everything we can to attempt to get the bargaining process between the company and the union to be more effective than obviously it was. The announcement brought mixed reaction to the picket line, leaving some with more questions than optimism. In my position, I look at it as uh, kind of another tactic to kind of throw everybody off base of what the real issue is. The real issue is it's an unfair labor practice. If they would have brought the, the documentation that was needed at the bargaining table, we probably wouldn't be in the fix we're in right now. Employees also wonder if the company is operating better than expected with the temporary workers then why try to resolve this so quickly into the strike? And you can't expect people that are working uh, 12 to 16 hours a day to uh, give you two weeks worth of work solid. A lot of striking employees don't have warm feelings towards the company at this point and want this strike resolved. Not Kaiser administrators cost, say that's the company's goal as well. Do we want to get a labor agreement? Absolutely. Are we absolutely resolved to getting a labor agreement that is, that is appropriate and consistent with where we need to take this company? Absolutely. No word on if a federal negotiator will be brought in or when a meeting would possibly take place. Live in the Spokane Valley, Rex Rowland, Krim 2 News. And there is breaking news in the Kaiser aluminum strike. Let's quickly now go to Audrey Port, who is standing uh, in Trentwood. Audrey? That's right, Richard. Kaiser aluminum has called for a federal mediator to settle this seven-day-old strike uh, with the steel workers. The company confirmed that information late this afternoon. Ro uh, Ray Malkovich, the uh, CEO presiding over all five Kaiser plants in America, was a guest this afternoon on KXLY News Radio 920. Milkovich called Kaiser's negotiations both legal and fair. He says the company had three objectives when entering into talks with the United Steelworkers Union. First, to improve the standard of living for employees. Second, to make the plants more productive now and for the future. And thirdly, to get a whole lot more local ownership where these people look at these plants as if they own them, uh, because that's the ultimate in job security we feel going forward. We made proposals that we thought did just that. Now, Milkovich says he wishes that the rank and file would have had a chance to vote on the company's latest proposal. Meanwhile, he says replacement workers exceeding expectations. He says that they're seven to nine days ahead of schedule of getting these plants and the production lines up and running. He says the Trentwood plant here is about 10 to 14 days away from going 24 hours a day, but apparently feels a stalemate in negotiations is just to the point where the company wants a federal mediator to come in and uh, try to push things along. So once again, Kaiser Aluminum calling for a federal mediator to come in and settle this strike. That is the very latest. Reporting live from the Spokane Valley, Audrey Port, Total News 4. Kaiser Aluminum is asking for a federal mediator to help resolve the week-old strike. The plea comes as the company's top executive visits Spokane to defend the company. Raymond Milkovich is Kaiser's president and chief yeah, executive yeah, officer. Yeah, he appeared on KXLY's News Radio 920 answering questions from the public. He says replacement workers are getting the job done even though they are not quite up to speed. Without question, uh, they're not at this point. However, what I saw yesterday at Trentwood and Mead, uh, we've got people coming down the learning curve very, very rapidly and uh, we're progressing every day. As Milkovich took to the airwaves, striking workers outside both plants listened to his comments on 920. They say Milkovich is exaggerating. Union workers say Kaiser cannot survive without them. Well, I know, I know Ray is a very smooth talker. Um, I, he can get his message across. He can sell a refrigerator to an Eskimo. Uh, he's, he's quite a salesman. That's what's got him into the position he is, and, he, and he's probably a good businessman. So far, no word if a federal mediator will step in or when talks will resume. We've heard from striking Kaiser workers about how tough this strike is on them financially, but what about those who consider the opportunity to be a replacement worker a real windfall? Total News 4's Audrey Port is live with that story tonight. Well, tonight we're going to hear from the other side of the picket line, from families that are also hurting financially and view replacement work as a big chance to get ahead. 
but I get lonely. I get sad when I do this sometimes. Making a quilt passes long and lonely days for Jessica Reyes. I think about him coming in the door, um, saying, I'm home, I'm done, everything's swell and dandy. Oh, Her husband is a replacement worker at Kaiser Mead, living there and pulling 13-hour shifts, hoping to earn enough money to get off welfare. It's not between the workers, and I'm sorry that there's workers in there taking your jobs and um, working, but they have to because they got families, too, that they have to support. Like the baby Jessica will have next May. It was a surprise pregnancy, but the Kaiser job means the couple may actually be able to afford diapers. We were so worried, and then this came into our lives, and he prayed about it, and this is what he had to do, and he did it. And I don't have to be scared how am I going to feed the baby. For Jessica, the pain comes from knowing all Spokane families need good jobs and pay. She hopes strikers will recognize and respect that. Do we have to do name calling? I mean, we're all adults, you know, because we don't have a lot of money, and this is the best opportunity that he has to do what's best in our lives and the baby's lives. Jessica, J Jessica's husband was a foundry worker who'd been out of a job for a year. Now at Kaiser's replacement working, he's making about $13.25 an hour money they say they very much need. Jessica says the mood inside the plant when she talks to her husband is very, very busy. She gets to talk to him only 15 minutes a day, but she says the sacrifice is worth it because their child is on the way. Reporting live from the Spokane Valley, Audrey Port, Total News 4. Two big developments today in the Kaiser strike. As Total News 4 first told you, Kaiser Aluminum is requesting a federal mediator to help negotiate an end to that seven-day-old strike. Kaiser's chief executive officer was also in Spokane today, hoping to jumpstart those negotiations. Ray Milkovich says that Kaiser's negotiations have been both legal and fair. He says the company had three objectives entering contract talks with the United Steelworkers Union. First, to improve the, the standard of living for employees. Second, to make the plants more productive. And thirdly, to get a whole lot more local ownership where these people look at these plants as if they own them, uh, because that's the ultimate in job secur security we feel going forward. We made proposals that we thought did just that. Meanwhile, Milk Milkovich says replacement workers are seven to nine days ahead of schedule in stabilizing the plant production lines, and that Trent Wood should be going to 24-hour day production in about two weeks. This story focuses on those replacement workers. Now, we've seen how the walkout is depleting the bank accounts of striking workers, but for those people who are replacing them, the strike is the answer to their prayers. Jessica Reyes' husband is a replacement worker at Kaiser Mead. He's pulling 13-hour shifts in an attempt to earn enough money to get off welfare and prepare for their upcoming baby. We were so worried, and then this came into our lives, and he prayed about it, and this is what he had to do, and he did it. And I don't have to be scared how am I going to feed the baby. Jessica says she sympathizes with the strikers, but hopes they understand that all Spokane families need good jobs with good pay. Day seven of the Kaiser strike and the company's president was in Spokane to see for himself. On Monday, Ray Milkovich toured Kaiser's plants at Mead and Trentwood. He praised the efforts of replacement workers and said the company wants an end to the strike, but he also says the company won't sign a labor contract that doesn't make financial sense. Uh, we had hoped that this would not be the case. Uh, we hope that a settlement is reached so that they can get back to the jobs that we want them to hold. Uh, but, but having said that, they're adults. Uh, they're, they're, they're involved in this process because of the situation we find ourselves in. And uh, they simply have to do what's right for them. Milkovich also says Kaiser has asked a federal mediator to get involved. No new talks are scheduled so far. <laughs> of the Kaiser strike and the company's president was in Spokane to see for himself on Monday Ray Milkovich uh, toured Kaiser's plants in Mead and Trentwood and he praised the efforts of replacement workers he says the company wants to end the strike but he also says the company won't sign a labor contract that doesn't make financial sense uh, we had hoped that this would not be the case uh, we hope that a settlement is reached so that they can get back to the jobs that we want them to hold uh, but but having said that, they're adults. Uh, they're, they're, they're involved in this process because of 
the situation we find ourselves in, and uh, they simply have to do what's right for them. Bokovic also says Kaiser has asked a federal mediator to get involved in this dispute, but no new talks have been scheduled. I hear Day seven of the Kaiser strike, the company's president was in Spokane today to see for himself. On Monday, Ray Milkovich toured Kaiser's plants at Mead and Trentwood. He praised the efforts of replacement workers. He says the company wants to end the strike, but he also says the company won't sign a labor contract that doesn't make financial uh, sense. That a settlement is reached so that they can get back to the jobs that we want them to hold. Uh, but, but having said that, they're adults. Uh, they're, they're, they're involved in this process because of the situation we find ourselves in, and uh, they simply have to do what's right for them. Milkovich also says Kaiser has asked a federal mediator to get involved, but no new talks have been scheduled. Well, if you